Hello guys! Today we are gonna launch a satellite and put it in orbit around Joule in order to study its various moons and to determine whether we can get there and land on some of them at some point in our space program. So I've set up my ship, tested it and I've actually waited until Kerbin and Joule are in the correct position relative to each other so we can just launch and head straight for it. We can just get up there without even getting into orbit, burn for Kerbin escape and head straight outwards towards Joule. And we might have to adjust our orbit a little bit, but other than for the adjustment burn it's anyway you'll see it's gonna be cool. And yeah we're gonna leave this top part of the satellite with the adjustable solar panels and the antenna dish up there for quite a while. So, Bill, yeah, sorry buddy but this is gonna be a one-way trip. So, here we go. This has a 160 parts I think so it doesn't lag quite as badly on launch so I think you're gonna be able to see the entire flight in this case. As for Eve I've tried going there with my Duna lander but there is no way we're gonna be able to take off again so other than setting down a probe there which I'm probably gonna do for the next video we are not gonna do a there and back trip for... I said Eve, right? Yeah. Anyway, we're not gonna do a there and back trip for Eve. At least not for quite some while. I thought I could create something using jet engines, but there's no way I can... I haven't been able to make such a design powerful enough to get into Kerbin orbit, much less to escape from Eve, so that's not gonna happen anytime soon. And I'm wearing my throttle here to minimize how much energy we lose in fighting air resistance and use our fuel a bit more efficiently. Essentially there's sort of a maximum speed which is determined by air resistance and the thrust of your engines. Essentially the faster you go the more air fights and the more of your energy is used to counter air resistance instead of just accelerating so you might not want to move too quickly at altitudes which are really low I try to keep it below 200 meters per second more or less at below 13,000 meters and below say 450 below 32,000 and that seems to work out pretty well well it's more of a guideline than anything else actually but it seems to work out pretty well anyway we've gotten off the ground we've done our turn and now we just I guess we turn horizontally and go straight for an escape trajectory no use doing much else right now so yeah, we're at full throttle. Yeah, when we're about to run out of fuel, because things tend to wobble around here, especially if you cut the throttle really quickly, I'm gone going to throttle down and then detach. Because this set of decouplers can... I haven't had a catastrophe here yet, but it does seem iffy. So yeah, we're gonna do that. And as you can see, we are well on our way to achieving a curb in escape velocity. Nearly there, in fact. And yeah, we should be escaping curb in any... Oh, yeah, 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 throttle down, throttle down, throttle down. There we go. And yes, we've escaped curb in. And that apoapsis will not do. Okay, so we're gonna have to escape curb in first. And then we're going to burn for jewel. Okay, and we've started on this set. Okay, turn that on, detach. Yeah, so maybe I should have waited until Kerbin had rotated a, a bit further 
into the oh yeah I should have waited a tiny bit longer as far as Kerbin's rotation is concerned so that we were at the sunset line when we launched so this is less than perfect but then again actually I think we can adjust and it's workable it's cause our trajectory is so far above the horizon you know the 90 degrees mark here are we doing it the right way? yeah the apocalypse should not be moving yeah we're gonna wait ah lag gh okay yeah I've had a few crashes when we went tr you know transferring from one sphere of influence to another so I am gonna save here because I think there are quite a few bugs here I don't know what exactly caused previous mission failures but yeah save often and since Jewel is so far away this is gonna take a few months to get out that far as for getting there landing and taking off from one of the moons I think with a minimum amount of redesigning and optimizing our Duna command and Duna lander well Duna 1 design will be sufficiently powerful to get us there and right I don't want to time warp anyway yeah, keep mixing those two uh, like hitting X to kill time warp it's yeah so since our orbits are so different in size we aim a lot closer to Joule when we're launching in fact here you kind of aim towards you can aim towards 45 or 60 degrees like you would with the moon but I'm gonna aim a bit further ahead of that so that to make sure we don't miss it and enter its sphere of influence probably on the backward swing of our orbit so yeah that's how we're gonna do it aiming a bit further ahead than you probably need to is actually safer if you have the fuel to spare than aiming too close to the planet you're aiming for in any case so yeah gonna have to and how much are you able yeah that's just the solar panel slash canard okay so I guess we can talk about some other stuff I will be launching a parachuted probe to Duna and I'm gonna land it there so that's probably gonna be the next mission after that we'll see I think I want to conquer Moho and maybe Eve's moon first and then we're gonna see about landing on some of Jules moons and then maybe we'll do Duna's moon as well since we might as well go for as complete a set as possible now I read online that it's technically possible to land on Jules but of course you wouldn't be able to take off again so it's so it would again be another parachuted probe yeah so we could land on Eve but we wouldn't be able to get back again like I said previously as for Moho well it could be an interesting challenge it has an inclined eccentric orbit which means it isn't circular it isn't flat and it, al it is also apparently very hot so we would have to land very carefully but I don't think it has a lot of gravity and I think since the heat is dependent on altitude we're gonna try and land on whatever high points and strange looking mountains we can find on Moho and land on those and we're gonna actually go for 
I'm thinking about going for a very small lander, just a small capsule with uh, some SAS stuff, the smallest possible engine, and a fuel tank. And some small landing legs, of course. And just go with that, I think. We'll see. Yeah, it does have an atmosphere because apparently that's how the. Hmm. Apparently that's how the heat system works, but it's not enough to actually land on it. You know, with parachutes, that is. Apparently they don't deploy or they don't deploy fully, and yeah, we're not gonna bother with that. So, yeah, we would have to land on engines. And we would have to land on engines running at a very low setting because the because of the heat. But well, guess we'll see. So yeah, hundred and twenty-five days right now. So it's going to be like half a year to get there. And then I don't really want an orbit that's too flat because I want to be able to get up above the ecliptic with the satellite and get clear shots of all the planets. Not that it actually matters, but you know. Yeah, and if you're interested in this design, I will show it at the end of this video. I'm going to go into ve the vehicle assembly building and pull it apart for you piece by piece and show you how it's constructed. So there's that. And we're getting pretty close actually. Should hopefully see an intercept pretty soon. I hope. Because it would really suck if I had screwed this up. Hmm. So, one day, 10 hours, 15 minutes. 16 minutes, actually. It's closer to 16. So, yeah, we're almost done with this. And you can see spheres of influence intersecting back here. So if we were heading for a specific moon of Joule, we would start at adjusting our orbit for the lack of better term when we were pretty far out from the actual planet and trying to get our s trajectory to intersect with one of the moons. Yeah, and Joule has a pretty thick atmosphere so you can do a Okay, we're gonna have to burn very slowly here. You can do a um, aero brake maneuver, that's the word. But you have to be careful, you don't want to dip below 120,000 meters because then you're just gonna land. And probably you want something like 130. The atmosphere starts about 140, but it's very thick right from the start, so be careful. And hopefully we're gonna see a sphere of influence intersecting here. Okay. Come on, give me an intercept now. Okay. No. Seriously, I didn't wait long enough. Or am I... Or, or are we really gonna get it on a backward swing? Let's see. Oh yeah, year plus. Seriously? Did I miss it? Maybe it had to be closer to 90 degrees after all. Huh. Well, whoops. Okay. So that's not good. 
Hmm. Okay, I am going to restart the flight, but I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to get back to you once we have a Joule intercept trajectory set up. And yeah, I'm gonna see you. And I'm back. So I went back and reloaded the save I made, you know, a few minutes back for you. And I just got a Joule periapsis. I waited a couple more days so that the orbital positions aligned better. And yeah, burning straight up from Kerbin can screw up your eventual orbit and path just a bit. But at the same time, s the f more speed up you build, you build up as you're heading away from Kerbin, the less time you spend in Kerbin's sphere of influence, and the less Kerbin's gravity will slow you down. So it kind of balances out. And here you can see our eventual periaps of one billion, one hundred ninety-four million meters. So Joule's sphere of influence is huge. Now we're gonna burn a tiny bit more because we want that to be actually that started headings. Okay, so this is actually yeah we're gonna do those adjustments once we get closer, so yeah, and if that happens turn the SAS on and off again. I think that sometimes helps. Okay, why are you thinking now? You shouldn't be thinking. You should just do as you're told. No thinking for you. The party will think for you. Yeah. You need to be from Eastern Europe to get that, I think. But, although you Americans might get it too. <laughs> Strangely enough. Yeah, so we're gonna have to burn southwards in order to... So yeah, if you want to get a periapsis which is as close as possible, um, you want to look at exactly how you're going to pass by the planet and then figure out how you need to burn in order to push your trajectory closer to said planet. And yeah, Yeah, I should probably try and keep pol politics out of my videos, otherwise I'm gonna say things which will inevitably offend people, so yeah. If anyone got offended, I'm sorry, but... You know, that kind of stuff does on occasion happen, so try not to worry about it too much. Okay. Okay, so... We're going to be passing way, way above Joule. So we are going to turn our amazing space vehicle. No, not northwards. Yeah. This is showing our heading relative to the sun. So we want to point southwards in relation to the sun and burn in that direction right now. And that will push our trajectory this way, if you can see my mouse cursor. And we'll shrink, uh, shrink our periaps because we're gonna be passing a lot closer to the jewel. To <laughs> jewel, since we're going to be heading on a more on less high trajectory. As you can see now, see how that's shrinking? Because we... yeah. And this periapsis isn't entirely accurate because it, I think, it shows you the, uh, uh, distance to the center of the planet, not to its surface. When it shows you the per periapsis you'll have once you change spheres of influence. So there's that. So now we are going to be passing it by pretty horizontally, but still at a great distance. But if we pushed our trajectory this way, if you can see my mouse cursor, this will push us closer to, again, Joule. 
so right now we want to burn prograde and that is the wrong way for prograde burn we want to burn towards 90 okay yeah this does take a while to turn but you probably want to stick with just one A SAS and one ordinary SAS module rather than sticking many on them or RCS fuel for that matter because you need to save weight every one of Kerbal mass units you bring with you um, means you need fuel on more fuel on all previous stages so you know if I wanted to add another big fuel tank here I would need more initial launch thrusters I would need more fuel to accelerate all of this through interplanetary space and anyway you get the idea the huge every unit of mass means a huge increase in fuel requirements so make sure you bring this is apparently wrong what but I'm pushing myself closer to the planet apparently I'm wrong here yeah keep an eye on the numbers and see how they change S most of the time you will probably figure it out right but on occasion you will get it wrong so keep an eye on the numbers and if you stick around till the end of the video you'll see how I constructed this and we'll have some idea how to get to Joule yourselves although our Duna command pod I think was powerful enough with the reserves it had especially if you replace the RCS stuff with extra fuel to get here and Okay, that's pretty damn low at this point. Eventually we're gonna want to bring it even lower, but for now I think this is pretty damn good. Okay, 25 is apparently all we can manage. Okay. Yeah, equity tutorial will do fine I think okay so yeah see that's the trade-off here you need to nudge things in just the right way but at the same time when you're far away you can make huge changes with very little fuel so uh, you know anyway yeah and if we are uh, talking about the command pod again and although no we do need the all of those engines to help actually push us into orbit I think well <laughs> if you replace the four outer nuclear engines with another set of fuel tanks then you could increase your fuel efficiency further because you would still have the same fuel efficiency you would have to burn for longer but in interstellar space that doesn't really matter and you could bring more fuel with you so yeah you could turn that into a pretty decent explorer craft with a bit of tinkering yeah and this does take a bit of time it's at least a year long mission twice that if you want to get back home then again you would just need to shrink your perhaps until it match more or less Kerbin's orbit and nudge things this way and that until you get a sp sphere of influence intersection at some point because of how long your trip there would be and how quickly Kerbin orbits it would be relatively simple to set up a uh, intercept 
Now I'm gonna do a round trip at some point. I do want to eventually land at least on one of its moons and come back uh, back again. But um, not just yet I think. So yeah, we're gonna be moving very slowly at first but once we get close to the planet I mean, at our lowest point, we're going to be moving at a huge speed, especially if we get a very low periapsis. It's gonna be like when I did my test flight with a probe ship. I got, uh, and actually I should save, saving. Anyway, I got a speed when doing the aerobrake maneuver at well. 10,000 meters per second and change, so yeah, huge speeds. So there's that. Yeah, this does supposedly have a solid surface, but it ends up destroying ships whenever you try to land on it. Again, from what I've read on the web, I haven't actually done it. And it's so has an atmosphere so thick and is so and we're heading in and at this point we want to burn southwards I think and yeah there's no hope of landing and taking off again that's just not possible unless you're using overpowered mods at which in which case I suppose you might be able to pull it off if you get really lucky and success yeah we want to push our trajectory in closer towards the planet and we're gonna do an aerobrake maneuver at by bringing our perapsis down to a hundred and thirty thousand meters and we're gonna save before we do that and we'll see how it goes. The time warp can cause you to just jump through the planet's atmosphere before the game registers that you're in the atmosphere and slows your time warp down so you have to be very careful with that. Eek! So let's see if we can find a less efficient angle for making these alterations because I just don't have the find okay holy crap we still have fuel in these huh yeah so those were apparently enough to get us this far okay we need to burn slightly northwards but I'm gonna keep it on the 80 degree mark here, I think. Oh, and it's passing out. If you time warp, it uh, gets fixed in place and stops that, in case you're wondering. Yes, 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 you want to do that. But I really need to aero break here. Okay, 140. The ship is not under acceleration, you stupid bitch. Okay. Mm. Uh, less than ideal. Let's try for precision. If you want to do this, bring RCS. <laughs> you don't need a lot, just a couple of ordin two or three ordinary RCS blocks to nudge you ever so slightly for the precision maneuvering. The ship is not under acceleration. Damn it! Oh, come on! Seriously? That high? Oh, you son of a... 
Ok. And it's not under acceleration. What? And now it's even higher? Wait, what? Am I burning the wrong way? Oh, damn it. Okay, now what? Okay, I'm going to time warp for a bit until I get a bit closer so I can do these adjustments. Yeah, and you can see the speed picking up. Okay. Okay, that should do. So we're seven days out. Let's save in case this doesn't work. I'm gonna switch to the ordinary view in a second. And why can't I see it? Am I still too far away? Actually. Huh. Okay then. So yeah, we're still far, far away from it. What's our altitude actually? So that's four hundred and forty three million meters. Okay. <laughs> so let's time warp until we're within a day of it then we're gonna switch over to the ordinary view and get a bit closer using that ok, orbital camera this still has a bit of fuel left hmm. well anyway that will do fine Okay, yeah. Oh, right, maybe we need to. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. We need to turn prograde. We want to be more or less perfectly aligned with our path of travel, otherwise, the atmospheric stresses might rip our ship apart, and I probably don't want that. Oh yeah, Bill, you're deeply screwed right now. There's no way you're getting back home. Okay... No, don't do that. Don't do that. Just a line, please. Thank you. So there it is, the furthest planet of the Kerbin, Kerbal, Kerbal solar system, whatever you want to call it. And we're plummeting towards it at a huge speed. Yeah, this speed would be enough to orbit Kerbin. If you are moving this quickly around Kerbin, even at a low altitude, you would be in orbit. Well, provided you are moving horizontally and not just vertically, but you get the idea. This is how quick even the lowest... This is as fast or faster than even the lowest curve in orbit. And we're still far, far, far away from it. Okay, getting closer. Yeah, and we're coming almost straight at it. Okay, now we're really starting to build up speed, and we're still almost a million meet, no, almost a hundred million meters out. It's huge. The moon is like, how high was it? 13, 14 million meters. We're further out even than Minmus, twice as far as Minmus right now. So, oh, and we're really picking up speed. Perhaps it's still good. Yeah. 
how close are we time wise? Ah, four hours. That's good. Yeah, here we go. Our orbit is gonna start to curve now because we are starting to really get into its atmosphere. And you can see the moon's orbiting. You can see how huge it is in comparison. Where's another moon? Oh, there it is. We're pretty close. I think that one has an atmosphere. Okay. So yeah, if we were heading for the moons, we would want a more or less equatorial and very high orbit around Joule. And that would allow us to just head in system and intercept the moons that way. And we're gonna try and set it up that way when we go for it. Although it will be harder. Then again, it should also save us a great deal of fuel, which when doing missions this far out is a genuine concern and you know I'm gonna get rid of those they do have a bit of fuel left but I don't want them ripping off and screwing things up for me later on and they just might I don't know how rough of a trip it's gonna be I hope that doesn't alter my orbit too much it did a bit Okay, so if I were to burn southwards a bit, I think that would help compensate for that. And it would also get me further away from this crap. Yeah, that crap will eventually crash into Joel, I think. Or it should, since it's gonna be in the atmosphere. Well, it doesn't matter since I have the space debris set for zero. How's that looking? Good. Oh yeah, and since we're closer in, the adjustments are happening more slowly, and that's good. Okay. Now we want to turn prograde again and stay like that. Right, I'm turning the wrong way. Yeah, and we're still further out from this planet than the altitude of moon so oh and that's another moon of Joule yeah so we're still further out than moon is from Kerbin and it's huge just huge it's a really really whoa what the my uh, g-force meter just jumped. I don't know if you saw that, but that was strange. Okay, now we are heading closer, closer. Oh yeah, that's a huge planet. Okay. We need to turn ourselves down. No, the other way, the other way. Yeah, and this top part is the actual satellite which will detach and leave here. Sorry about that. Okay, since our orbit is going to curve further, let's turn a bit further than we need to right at this moment and leave it at that so that we don't have to god damn it it's such a whale of a ship yeah so that we don't have to turn f yeah see our path is curving and yeah and we are gonna start skimming through the atmosphere pretty soon now and yeah look at that speed moving at a huge speed and the game still thinks we're going to escape from Joule we're not gonna escape we should be able to drop into orbit head up towards the periapsis burn in order to establish a stable orbit and then just detach the satellite and just our orbit so that we move nice and far away from this stage and yeah
and we're just gonna leave it here we're still not in the atmosphere but we're gonna be soon yeah, and this should make for a really shallow dip into it hopefully yeah it looks like it's gonna collide but that's cause the atmosphere is weird like that here let's time warp for a little bit 140,000 that's where the atmosphere yeah and look at that I mean wow isn't that amazing it's so cool looks really alien too I mean Kerbin it's just another blue green planet but this this is just weird and we are in the atmosphere yeah we don't want to dip too deeply yeah and from the moment we are in the atmosphere we're even though we're still falling we're no longer picking up speed we're losing speed don't want to stay in here too long but we're gonna see if this is gonna be enough actually maybe we didn't go deep enough that's also a possibility then again I'd rather not do enough of this than overdo it and come crushing down yeah we're about to even out and start climbing it again but yeah we're losing speed pretty well I think we're gonna lose just enough here will leave us in a very eccentric very high orbit and we might want to actually do another dip in the atmosphere and yeah maybe then again maybe not yeah we're climbing again that's good and we are in orbit yeah I think we did just right we're not gonna we're gonna save more fuel than we end up using so that's good I think that's what's gonna happen here I don't know for a fact of course yeah and we've managed to climb a bit it's still pretty high and we didn't shave that much speed off it okay I'm gonna save here yet again and we're gonna do this again I know that's crazy but screw it yeah we're still heading upwards still heading upwards aero braking for the win falling now really falling let's actually do this a bit differently time to periapsis is one day 15 hours so not that far away okay so if I burn this way this pushes me inwards which I don't want if I burn the other way it should push me outwards let's set this at 100 and 130 435 something like that I don't want to risk losing too much speed I do want a pretty decent orbital altitude okay yes 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 all over the place I know how you roll buddy I know like that crap okay a f oh god stop well we need to turn around anyway since we want to be pointed in just the right way yeah we want to bring this way in actually and I could probably burn once I'm closer in but screw that let's just get this done about right that will do and it's always overcompensating I mean, seriously can't you can't they like do something about that seriously okay so there it is we're gonna swing over it 
and come down yay so that the, the way we're pointing so even though it doesn't look like it right now we are actually pointing in just the right way direction you'll see in a second well maybe not just the right direction but close uh, orbital speed thank you Huh. I wonder how it would be to try and fly a jet plane in this soup maybe I should try to get one here huh. Right, it does offer some possibilities, eh? Especially the one where you can, you where you have a proper cockpit and can look outside. It would be weird and cool, I think. Yeah, we're. I think I'm gonna try and do that at some point, and I'll make a video of it to show you guys the cool stuff I discovered. Probably won't subject you to another interplanetary flight. Probably. Well, maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I. The time warp. Hmm. Yeah, and we're losing speed again. I think I'm not gonna. Yeah, a third aero brake maneuver would be a bad idea at this point. We're gonna leave it at this. Oh, yeah, it's actually compensating with uh, the solar panels yeah they're solar panels definitely adjustable to catch the maximum amount of power from the oh so distance on oh god that's so small compared to what it's like from Kerbin anyway and we're starting to climb again which is good I think we're start yeah we're climbing since we've moved pretty far in I probably want to push my orbit way way out there and I think I'm out of the atmosphere yes I am I want to push my orbit way out there so that I am not within the orbits of any planets here and just keep taking pictures of them so yeah we're gonna do a burn here and then we're gonna call it a mission okay let's get nice and close yeah careful with the time warp kids it's a killer seriously don't screw with the time warp so we're gonna have a pretty polar orbit here but that's fine that's fine that means we can get all kinds of pretty pictures from all kinds of angles so yeah the idea behind this mission is that we're putting a satellite in orbit to take pictures and readings from the various planets yeah in space Oh God's damn! Swap, stop swinging around. Yeah, he's no. He knows what's coming. He knows he's not coming back. Okay, apparently that now is a lot higher. Maybe our swinging around gave it some extra energy or something. Well, whichever the case, I'm gonna burn here with the huge excesses of fuel we have available to actually let's adjust our orbit to a more polar one anyway let's bring that prograde marker as close to northwards as we can oh yeah it's a turning Here we go. Almost, yeah. Let's turn it off and push our periapsis out a ways. 
No, God damn it! Even with the vectoring engines, because the nuclear engines are vectoring. Yeah, it still screws around with you. No, don't turn that way. I have no idea what that is. So, Tylo, 62 million. Bob, 103 million. So we need to push this out beyond that. Well, I guess we're gonna have a bit of a long burn here again. I suppose. Yeah, and we're kind of a bit outside. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. We'll go with that. This is a good altitude. Okay. Might as well take a look at these. Oh, lots of oceans. That's gonna be a pain. Okay, some land masses there. A bit more there, but lots of oceans. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. This one does not look too big and has no atmosphere. I'm gonna have to develop. Um, lander which is optimized for no atmosphere plants and this is going to be like total easy mode because it's very tiny will have a low gravity because of it did we look at Tylo already? no but again another airless rock so yeah I think they should all be doable with whatever however you pronounce it Lithe? Lithe. I'm gonna go with Lithe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Lithe. Anyway, Lithe is gonna be the hardest one. Probably. Because it looks bigger. And it has an F load of ocean. Which is gonna make actually getting there and landing very difficult because we're gonna have to do a pinpoint landing. And if we're gonna use parachutes to get there, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to land there and not land in water. Okay, our perhaps is getting out there. We're almost there. Yeah. This kind of keeps growing faster and faster as you accelerate, so almost there. I'm gonna circularize this at say 175 after I'm done with the half fuel tank I have on the actual satellite part. Yeah and I use the this engine for the antenna here in case you're wondering. And yeah we're almost done. So what else are we gonna talk about? Well, yeah. Huh. Okay. So, Moho. There, a more traditional Moonlander might work best with... Oh, God damn it, it's my effing cat. I'll be back in a second. And I'm back. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, okay. So, Moho. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with a more traditional moon lander design here. Uh, four symmetry, small engines, detachable fuel tanks on the outside. And yeah, just five small engines, outer four feeding into the inner one, and we're gonna try to land with that setup there. You can aim for a nice high point. Which I think I think there is one on the sunward side of the planet. And we're gonna try and land on that. We'll see how that works out. Yeah we're gonna see if we get a sphere of influence thing here at any point. Apparently not. That's alright. Actually, Bob, even though it has a low gravity, might be a bit hard because it's inclined. 
then again it depends on how our approach works out, doesn't it? Hmm. Life. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. And our... Okay, we're gonna wait until we're... Oh, you can switch back to your craft now. I think... I think you couldn't do that in previous versions. At least, I certainly had trouble with it. But yeah, that's good. Okay. So we're almost there. Future missions we've discussed. I guess I could look for um, effective moon lander designs by traveling to the moon and seeing how they behave because we are gonna need plenty of engine power I don't think Moho is much larger than the moon but it's the heat problem you can't run your engines at high settings without them overheating and exploding horribly in a flaming ball of kerbals and death so that should be fun chunk Oh, you poor guy. Yeah, we're gonna leave you here. Screw you. How's that looking? Yeah, 175 ought to be good. Almost. Yeah, I guess we could rescue him at <laughs> some point. It's kind of a dick move leaving him here forever. Oops, missed it. But it doesn't matter. Not gonna be at risk with that of actually colliding with it since space is big. Unbelievably, hugely big. So, yeah. Yeah. Distance to apoapsis, you should probably measure it. When you care about such things, measure it in how far away from it you are, not in distance. Screw distance. Well, the... Angular distance, that matters, the... How far away from your apoaps you are in degrees. Wow, that's a lot more maneuverable. Anyway, let's finish up this orbit, leave this poor, poor guy here and go to the vehicle assembly building and look at this design. Yeah, I'm sorry Bill, but science demands sacrifices. Bye bye buddy. load please load okay here it is you might recognize this launch part from my Duna missions it's the same design for symmetry eight outer boosters four inner ones and this gets us up into space into orbit if we manage the fuel efficiently we yeah this gets us into orbit and this takes us on an interplanetary voyage and this is the actual satellite so yeah these feed inwards they're strapped together with space duct tape as some people call it oh yeah and you can see that these feed upwards here and these feed here so that we can fire this engine here it does save the as a tiny amount of fuel because its efficiency goes up very quickly as you climb through the atmosphere but mostly it's for stability because it does vector and helps stabilize your ship then we have these nacelles with four symmetry to take us there feeding inwards strapped together yet again central stuff which we use on the spot to get into orbit and maneuver some and the satellite which is 
has an engine for adjustments, computer and stabilization system as well as an antenna dish and a power system. So yeah, that's it more or less. And let's take another look at our satellite, I guess, before we finish up. Yeah. Bill. Forever orbiting jewel. Yeah. You're gonna stay here, buddy, but... If you're good, some of us might visit you. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this, and goodbye for now.